Once again, sports fans, to the only Cal TV show not making the jump to the NBA. My name's Dan Fiedler. And I'm Daphne Pepinitas. Today we're going back. And forth. The number eight Cal baseball team has proven to be a surprise with their success, but that success has become rather spotty and seemingly random. After winning their series over Pac-10 powerhouse Oregon State just two weeks ago, the Cal team lost to unranked USC this past weekend. So sure, the Cal team has mostly wins, but Dan, is this team for real? Daphne, I really think you're making a mountain out of a mole here. Uh, it's just sort of the nature of uh, the baseball season to have some seemingly random wins and some seemingly random losses. You know, we have a, a long pitching rotation in which there's, you know, you sort of run the spectrum of your best to your worst starter, and, you know, players have to play constantly every day, and it's much easier to go into slumps just because, you know, you're not shooting on the same basket, you know, 10 feet, same diameter, no right. matter where you go. I mean, you're I, facing a whole lot of different pitchers, and it, it's very easy to be streaky in baseball. I, yeah, so I, I think don't I'm going to agree with you. I think the reason I'm going to, one of the main reasons I'm going to agree with you is because what you see is is that Cal's right number eight. Yet, right. how many losses do they have? And they're kind of to these, like I mentioned, these random teams. And so it is kind of the nature of baseball. It's just that in a college season when you're obviously not playing 162 games, right. you don't expect that to happen as much, right? It's like the same thing with the NBA and college basketball. In 82 games in the NBA, you never expect a team to go undefeated. But right. in college basketball, it's very possible. You're playing fewer games. The competition is a little bit lower. You know? I agree. But see, we, we just sort of got to scale that uh, system down. You know, in the, in the MLB, it's very... Um, sort of common for a really good team to drop, you know, two or three series or get swept. You know, yeah. the, it happens to the Yankees all the time during right. their championship years. And I think in this, you know, we're not seeing Cal lose three games in a row to any teams. I mean, they just dropped the series to USC. Common occurrence, nothing to worry about. The undefeated season was not to be, as the California Golden Bears were knocked off by the University of British Columbia 27-22 to in their final game of the season. Now the Golden Bears will go to the playoffs where they'll meet the Tennessee Volunteers this Friday. So Daphne, now that their undefeated season has been broken, do you still see this team going all the way to the finals and taking the ship? Alright Dan, well let's start with this. We were right, right? We were right okay. that they weren't going to yeah. go undefeated, mm -hmm. so let's see if we can be right about this as well. I think that... This team definitely has the potential to go all the way, and you notice that right. their one loss was to a good team. UBC is a big series, it's a kind of a big deal, this whole the, the uh -huh. World Cup series that they do. Right. So at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. Last year and the year before, they lost a game or two, and they still won the national championship. Rugby is not one of those things. I mean, it is it is a kind of sport where you can go undefeated, but yeah, it is. they don't have to dominate all the way through. Okay, yeah, well one thing we need to notice is that the only game they lost was to British Columbia. Right. And we know now that, um, they're not the best team on planet Earth, but they don't have to go through British Columbia necessarily to win the championship, right? So I think that we can see in the national championship that right. they're not going to have too much trouble knocking off these other teams that we've seen them beat all year. Right, and we saw, we saw them beat a team from the UK. We saw them beat St. Cuthbert. So it's not like they can't, I mean, they can hold up against international competition, but the point is they're not going to have to face international competition exactly. to win the national championship. I see championship. them rolling through the United States. With the college basketball season officially over, the freshmen are coming out in droves. O.J. Mayo, Derrick Rose, Jared Bayless, Michael Beasley, Eric Gordon, all freshmen who have already declared for the 2008 NBA Draft. So Dan, what is this going to do to college basketball next year? Are we going to see a decline, or will there just be a new batch of fabulous freshmen? Daphne, I think this is going to be good for college basketball, and I'll tell you why. I think it, it creates a heightened sense of drama when you realize that we have these phenoms that come into the college basketball scene, right? And it may be one and done or not, you know? But I, I sort of like this uncertainty of, you know, will it be not, the last Dan, game? it's never the not, Dan. It's never the not. Well, sure it is. I mean, no. we see some, t Who some players stayed? every, Who every once stayed? in a while. Who are the phenoms that have stayed? Okay, well, we don't know Kevin Love is gone for He's sure. He's probably yet. gone. Well, maybe. All I'm saying is that if we make this mandatory, like you have to be there for two years, you have to be there for three years, something like that, you realize in the first season, we lose all that drama, like, will he stay? Will he go? Because he has to stay. So it's like, oh, there's, there's always next college year. college basketball is who's going to be there and who's not going to well, be there? Well, I'm just saying it's sort of the fleeting aspect, you know? Doesn't the NBA get a lot more interesting when, oh, you know, it's David Robinson's last year, it's I Reggie Miller's last it, year. It's so it, much more entertaining, don't you think? I think it's more entertaining because the actual basketball... It's like college football. You have these guys there. You have these guys there for three years. It's not 
that big of a deal. If they stay or if they go, it's going to be one more year. They've already been there for three years, okay? Well, it's the game that's I supposed the, to be exciting. Like the not game does get more exciting because these players recognize it themselves that their time is very limited in college basketball. But see, here's and the so thing. No, no, no. Even their harder, time is limited, though. Because they choose for it to be limited. They could stay if they wanted for okay, four years well, and use up all I of mean, their eligibility. Sure, everybody loves being in college basketball, but when you got an $8 million contract staring you right With in the face... With a $20 million bonus. Yeah, I think, bonus. Yeah, I think bonus. you're going to go to the NBA, but that doesn't mean you don't still want to compete in the college basketball scene. It's just sort of, you know, you got to take the money. I well, that's all the time we have for today. For Dan Fiedler, I'm Daphne Pepinitas. Keep tuning back to Cal TV for your download on What's Up in Cal Sports.